name is Devika Bhagat. I am the co-founder of Adventurous Spirits Distillery. I'm from the Wine, Spirits and Cigar Committee of the Mumbai chapter. And I'm here to talk about gin. Who, what, why, where and how. Three years ago, my husband Khalil and I uh, co-founded Adventurous Spirits Distillery and we decided that we were going to start to distill gin in the state of Goa in India. Um, this was I suppose the simplest way to put it, a midlife crisis. We had been in the film and television industry since we were 25 years old. And after 15 years of creating content, myself as a screenwriter and my husband as a producer, we realized the one thing that was missing in our life, which, which, which had brought us into the film and television field was passion. Somewhere along the way, um, our passion had turned into a means of um, earning a living and paying our bills. And in our late 30s, we decided that we needed to find something else which we could be passionate about. And what that was, we didn't know. Um, and we had to go on a journey to discover that. In 2018, my husband and I were on a vacation in London and we were at a bar where uh, the bartender, the mixologist was making us all these gin cocktails. Um, I had become a gin drinker back in 2008 when Hendrix had come out with their whole cool new approach to gin with their apothecary style. And Khalid had followed suit after that. And in this bar, as the mixologist made all these gin cocktails for us, the conversation came up about the genocence that was happening around the world. And his question to us was, so what's the gin scene like in India? And Khalil and I were stumped because while we considered ourselves gin connoisseurs and traveled around the world and tried different kinds of gins and visited distilleries, we realized there actually wasn't much of a gin scene in India. Um, there was only one gin that had been available for the last 40 years. And beyond that, there was nobody else in the craft industry. And that's when Khalil, after moping over his martini and, his, and our Negronis, turned to me and said, maybe we should make gin. And spontaneously, on the spot, I just said yes. And once you say OK in a marriage, it's really, really difficult to take that back. And this is where our journey began. And the most important thing is we knew how to drink gin but we didn't know how to make it. So the first six months we spent on how to make gin. What is the distillation process? What it goes into a gin? What are the botanicals we should research? What are the licensing um, uh, procedures within India in order to be able to start to make gin? And six months is when we realized that we could potentially do this and we decided to go ahead. And that's when uh, we met our master distiller and blender, Yulia Nurnai, um, uh, from Germany. Uh, we met uh, the Mueller still uh, people from Germany who then um, started to manufacture our copper still for us. And we decided to take the long route. Since we had been to so many distilleries around the world, we decided that we were not going to license a space from another established distillery, nor were we going to contract bottle, that we were going to start our own distillery. And when we went to the excise office in Panjim, they first wanted to make sure that we understood that you know everybody else who had by then begun to uh, distill gin in Goa was doing it as a licensee from already established distilleries over contract bottling. But we, Khalil and I, we were quite um, stuck on the idea of having our own distillery. And they said, yeah, sure, of course, you can you can do that. There's one window application. And of course, when that window opened up, there were a hundred more behind it. And it took us about a year to get the various different licenses, which ranged from establishment of distillery to the manufacturing license, to bottling, to uh, import of uh, base spirit across state lines, to weights and measures, to pollution, etc. And of course, by the time we got all these licenses, the pandemic began. And so we were stuck for a year. And it's only last year, um, starting from January of uh, 2021, is when we could fly down our master distiller, Yulia Nurnai. She could get her visa. We could get our uh, copper still from Mueller stills that was stuck in freight down to Goa. And we could really begin to really experiment with what would ultimately be our gin. So what is our gin? Our gin, which we make, is Tamaris Indian Dry Gin. Thamrus is a Sanskrit word. It's a noun. It means two things. It means copper and it means lotus flower. Now, the reasons for this name are, of course, the first one is that we copper distill our gin in our 237 liter Mueller still. And the second is that of the 16 botanicals that are present in our gin, lotus flower and lotus seeds are two of them. So what 
is our gin all about? Um, there are various processes that make our gin a little different from other gins. Uh, the most important being that we use what is known as a multiple distillate uh, process. Another gin which you may have heard of which does this is Roku. Roku uses the mul multiple distillate uh, procedure and uh, they distill their, their botanicals in six different ways. Roku meaning six. We use five distillates. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to cater our distillation process, our temperature and the speed of our still according to what the botanicals need. So our first distillate, which is known as our base gin distillate, um, has of course the most essential botanical which has to be present in any gin, which is juniper berries. Without juniper berries, you're essentially just making a flavored vodka. And then we have a couple of technical botanicals, which are angelica root and orris root, um, which basically are fixatives. They help to fix the taste and odor um, of uh, the gin. So what makes Tamaris different? Besides owning our own distillery space, which gives us more control over the quality and the process of our gin, um, we get to choose where our base spirit comes from. Um, after uh, trying out many different uh, base spirits that were coming to us from bigger distilleries that distill from the base um, ingredient, we decided to go with a base spirit that is made from rice. Unusually, since most uh, gins are made uh, from wheat as of course gin is a British spirit and of course British wheat is used to make most gins but we decided to go with rice because one of the most essential components that you need for a gin is that it has to be extra neutral extra neutral in um, taste and extra neutral in aroma so that all the taste and the aroma that is in your gin is coming from the botanicals that you choose to distill it with so that is one thing that makes our gin distinct is that we use a rice based spirit. Another thing that makes our gin um, different from other gins is that we use a multiple distillate uh, process. We are not a London dry gin. We are an Indian dry gin, dry gin because we do not add any sugars or any essences to our gin. It is all through the distillation process. The multiple distillate gin is used by a very famous gin that you may have heard of, which is Roku, the Japanese gin. They uh, distill their botanicals in six batches and then blend them together. So we use a very similar procedure. We have five distillates. Um, the first of which is the base gin. It's called the base gin because it has juniper berries in it. And of course, we all know that a gin cannot be a gin without the presence of juniper berries. Otherwise, then it's just a flavored spirit. Along with uh, juniper berries, we have technical botanicals like orris root, angelica root. We have a few Indian like uh, green cardamom, black cardamom, fennel. We have cobet peppers. We have a European um, herb known as lemon verbena. And of course, we have coriander. Then a Another uh, distillate that we do separately is that uh, we do a citrus distillate. Citrus is one of the most important components of any gin. Um, and what makes us different from most gins is that we use fresh whole fruit. And therefore, we can only distill it in the winter months when the harvest comes in from the farms. Uh, most other gins use dried peel because it's available uh, through the year. The other distillates that we do uh, separately are our signature botanicals, Nilgiriti. And we do, of course, lotus seeds and lotus flowers. And finally, we do Indian mint or pudina. Then what we do is we take all these five distillates and we blend them together in our secret recipe. And then we slow dilute it with demineralized water to bring it to bottle strength, which is 42.8%. Now, a gin as a spirit has grown in immense popularity over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, and we as um, gin distillers have managed to take away some of the market share from the vodka drinkers. Um, and one of the reasons which I feel this has happened is because gin is a very versatile spirit. A tankery is not the same as a rook. Every gin is different because of the presence of botanicals in it. So within the category of gin, as compared to let's say the category of a vodka where you going for let's say a smoothness or perhaps a brand name or perhaps distilled from potato or, or grapes or wheat. Gin in itself has flavor profiles so distinct that you can find that it caters to a wider variety of people. Um, some people prefer a juniper forward gin. Some people prefer a spice forward gin. Some people prefer a, a citrus forward gin. So within the category 
it's not just about having jinns. It's about having multiple different kinds of spirits that have juniper berries in them. And because of the versatility, the boredom never sets in. You know, people are always saying, yeah, okay, there was the time for the vodka and now it's time for gin. And perhaps the next spirit that's going to take over is, is agave spirits like tequila or mezcal or maybe rum. But the most important aspect about gin, which I feel will continue to allow us to have gin running as a popular spirit for a much longer, longer time is because that every gin that comes out is so distinct because of the presence of the botanicals in it. And because of each of the gins that is available in the market, whether they be the larger uh, mass produced uh, gins that are produced in, in millions, or whether they be a small craft, a cocktail also made from a gin doesn't taste the same if it's made with another gin. And um, of course, everybody knows that a gin can be drunk as a gin and tonic. Some people find tonic too sweet, and so they drink what is known as a gin and tonic, which is half soda, half tonic, or maybe they just uh, decide to go as a gin and soda. Um, besides that, the most popular cocktails which have, I suppose, epitomized gin uh, in popular culture are two. The first is the Martini and the second is the Negroni. Um, these two cocktails have really set gin in um, you know, popular culture, whether it be in films or, or television or books or iconic characters, whether it be Humphrey Bogart uh, from Casablanca, whether you're talking about James Bond. Um, but beyond that, we have mixologists that really can work with a versatile spirit like gin and so the amount of cocktails which are classic cocktails like a Gibson or a Gimlet you know or a bee's knees for example or a french 75 are being played around with with local flavors so not only are we as craft gin distillers uh, adding a sort of a uh, indigenous spin to our gins for example if it's a japanese gin they're playing with yuzu and cherry blossom and if it's an indian gin for example like ours tamaris gin we're playing with a fruit that nobody else has used in the process of distilling gin like mosambi which is a sweet lime. Mixologists around the world are also playing with indigenous, indigenous flavors for gin cocktails. So you can have a French 75, which is a kokum French 75. You can have a, a version of a Bloody Mary with gin in it known as a red snapper, but instead of using a hot sauce like Tabasco, you're putting sort of indigenous chilies into it or um, an indigenous chili paste. So like this, the versatility of gin as a drink um, even on its own as a sipping gin or on the rocks or as a cocktail has infinite possibilities. And that is the reason for its popularity today. What I can say from the journey that Khalil and I have been on in the process now, um, it took us three years to start our distillery and to really get Tamaris into the market. And now we are five months old. We are available in Goa and in Mumbai in retail as well as bar and restaurant establishments. Is that it's never too late to follow your passion. But the most important thing is that um, with that passion, you have to educate yourself. And it's never too late um, to really go on a learning process and to be able to really understand why you're getting into a business or a passion and what you hope to get out of it. What Khalil and I were hoping to get out of it was to be able to do something that we enjoy. Um, something that we earlier enjoyed and we continue to enjoy because we're still in film and television is one aspect. But something that we can really sink our teeth into, um, which allows us to be able to use skills that we may not have used in our other profession. Of course, at the moment, since we are five months old, um, we have uh, just one uh, spirit, which is Tamaris. But in the future, when we talk about expansion uh, plans, obviously, we are looking at variants, different expressions of Tamaris as well as limited editions and hopefully if that works then we can even think about going into another spirit for example like a rum. Uh, what is important about a distillery um, is that we are the only distillery in India to offer gin tours. I would like to thank DLC and Mr. Mistry for having me here and for giving me uh, this opportunity and I hope to see all of you at the Adventure Spirits Distillery in Goa. Thank you. Thank you.